approval of agenda. We have motion on agenda. Move seven now. Is that correct? Yes, yes. We're going to uh, the McClure rep is coming in later, so we're going to jump from item six to item eight and nine, put seven after that. So, I just like get to. Yeah. one other further clarification on number seven. It sh should we consider motion to recommend? Or Restate your stuff a louder, Debbie. I don't think they could hear in the back. Oh, the McClure representative is running late, and he called and asked to move item seven down, do number eight and nine, and then do number seven after he's here. So that's fine with us. If do that in that order. So we'll modify the agenda to that. I'll make a motion uh, as you just stated. Okay. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, audience items, are there any items uh, not on the agenda? Not? I just have one. Okay. Um, we got no notification from, uh, my name's Jim Johnson, by the way, I'm attached right to the Snitzer land. And uh, we never got a notification of this meeting. Uh, can be in the future we get a little, you know, we've got other people got my bride over by us and we never got a notification when he had to put that up. And so, hmm. is there any way we can get notifications of this? I mean, I believe everybody in the radius was uh -huh. by they, they are. It's you were just, not. It's people within the city limits of Polk City within the radius. So okay. when you when the property is located outside the corporate limits, uh, they don't receive receive uh, official notification. Okay. Did you hear that? No. Can't hear a word you're saying. Yeah, I I heard it. Okay. Uh, but that does that make a difference that we can't get one? Um, well, I mean, I, it's just small stamp. Yeah, so we could certainly talk to staff about that. I don't. It'd be appreciated. Yeah. Okay. Even the ones that excuse me, even the ones that are in the city limits should be notified. Apparently, the whole street. Hmm. Okay. We'll make note of that and look into that then for future. Any other audience items? Okay, we'll move to item five, approval of the minutes for P and Z October 10th. Is that a chance to read them and we have a motion to approve those? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, item six, approval of the November 18th minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. Okay, we'll move then to item eight. <coughs> Consider motion to recommend council approval of comprehensive plan amendment for the revision of future land use. We have someone to speak to that. Here. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Roger Silver. I'm a landscape architect with Nellis Associates at 1250 South Street in Ankeny. And uh, before I begin, I, I'd also like to say that my wife and I are here in this summer city and we're excited about the neighborhood and we're glad to be I have some. <clears throat> That's hard to read, isn't it? <laughs> no. Tonight, representing Andy Sneslar and his wife Mary and his mother Genevieve Lilithkow on their um, request to 
to rezone the land where they live in preparation for future development. Um, property, as I'm sure you received in your um, packets, is uh, located west of 45th Street, uh, uh, south, south Side Drive. Um, there, there's more clear outline in the uh, documents we submitted. Um, what I'd like to do is offer you a brief presentation of the project and uh, then address briefly some of the review comments from Snyder and Associates. Our goal here is to explain the proposal and hear your thoughts and questions. Um, while we would love to get a yes vote from you on this, we think there are still um, a lot of issues that we want to discuss in more detail with Snyder and Associates, but we also want to hear your comments and questions so that we can take all that information and then come back to you hopefully in January with a little bit more polished um, subdivision uh, or proposal for our zone. So um, with that, uh, we will be asking for a continuous to the January meeting. Um, Andy and Mary Snetzel are built their house 15 years ago, um, uh, which is located right in the center of, of East. Mm -hmm. And Genevieve has lived in her home on the southeast portion of the property for 55 years. They spent decades caring for and overseeing improvements to this land, and existing trees have been protected and many new trees planted at that time. Uh, Andy came to us in 2016 to discuss his property, and uh, you know, this this is between him and his mom and his wife, this is their home. And they know that someday it will develop and they would like to be in control of that so it develops correctly. But, uh, as it's a large, important piece to Polk City, but they want to see that it develops so the rolling topography and the existing trees and mature woodlands are preserved as much as possible. They want to see low-density single-family homes arranged to protect the tree-lined slopes and the creeks and ponds that are along the center of the south and the western edges. Of <clears throat> and that's why when we worked on our concept plan, and I, will, I want to zoom into a little better area, Maybe I'll just skip straight to the concept plan. We believe the east, we believe that the uh, South and western portions of this property are ideal for the low-density development. Again, there's a lot of rolling topography, mature woodlands, lots of oaks, and hickories, and so forth. And Andy wants to make sure that the development is laid out in such a way that it, it preserves as much of those as we can and takes advantage of those as it'll add value. Um, the eastern portion is designated on the comp plan as commercial. And while we understand 44th Street is and will continue to be a major connector road, uh, we don't believe that such a large parcel as what is shown on the current Polk City comp plan uh, is is worth the cost of the trees and pond on the southern section. So really the difference uh, in the commercial piece that we're proposing is that obviously it's much smaller and it doesn't go all the way as far south because again, we've got existing his mother's house and existing home lots, which may be more appropriate for that area. Um, again, our planning discussions with Andy have been focused on low density single family homes and where those could exist. Um, we've included the concept master plan here so you can see the intent for the overall development. R1 is again on the western and the southern edges. Um, the R2 and R2A are more towards the center of the piece, and the R2A would represent that multifamily buffer that would exist between the single family and the commercial. Um, while the owners are not specifically interested in developing commercial ground, it was expressed to us that preserving some of that land for commercial the city. That's why we tried to honor the comprehensive plan by still including a 20 acre piece of commercial, which we designated C1, we understand that maybe it would be better than the C2, we have no issues with that whatsoever. And uh, that 20 acre piece could still support 200,000 square commercials. We still believe it's a significant piece and would, would again honor that kind of plan. So, um, I think in response to the Snyder uh, 
comments on our concept plan. Again, we're really not asking necessarily to approve it. We wanted to show you more so you could see what the intent was. We don't really have major issues with most of their comments. I believe we can work through those with some questions. Um, about the only one that I wanted to specifically address was that there are existing homes that access Southside Drive and 44. While we understand it may not be desirable to have new lots that would access that, we do show one um, on Southside Drive, kind of middle. So probably just remove that so that you didn't have any new driveways on the south side drive. You would want to just make sure that we are not doing anything by agreeing with that or harming any of the existing driveways. We would want to restrict any existing driveways that are already on to either one of those. And the southeast parcel, um, far southeast corner in the R1 against uh, 44 does have an existing driveway. We'd like to preserve that so that it could be accessed off 44th as it has been. For so um, I think that's about all I really wanted to mention. We'd uh, you know, request that after your comments and questions, you table making a recommendation to City Council on both comp plan and rezoning, and we'll get to why some of the addressing concerns. We'd be happy to answer questions. Comments? I would like to hear what the engineer has to come. Yeah, well, um, I just, in terms of the comprehensive plan, I just wanted to point out the differences between this plan and what the comprehensive plan shows. Um, primarily uh, is the reduction in size of the area that was designated for commercial use. Uh, in your memo, you could kind of see I overlaid um, what the existing the existing comprehensive plans plan for future land use over the comp plan. So you kind of see uh, the areas and the, and the changes in the use. So that's on the bottom of that second page of your memo. Uh, you can see there that the commercial uh, use is shown on the comprehensive plan did extend south of the cul-de-sac that they have on, uh, on uh, Northwest 44th Street and then uh, west of the R2. So they are cutting the the uh, commercial ground roughly in half compared to what the original comprehensive plan amendment or would be. And that's what, one of the reasons that we had said before any rezoning could be approved that it would take a comprehensive plan amendment. Uh, the second uh, item is that the comprehensive plan did have high density residential use as a buffer to the commercial and they're proposing to instead have R2A, which is the by attached townhomes as a, as a smaller buffer strip than than the art than the original high density, which is shown in orange. Um, the comp plan, uh, then it, they also would relocate um, the medium density residential. Uh, again, essentially getting rid of it. it. On the original comp plan, the west area that's shown kind of in yellow on the on the bottom of page two uh, was medium density residential. And that the by attached kind of would fit into that medium, would, would fit into that medium density. So, again, kind of getting rid of the high density and the medium density and instead having a uh, medium density by attached town as a, as a kind of a strip around the proposed commercial. And then adding in low density residential because this particular parcel did not have any uh, low density residential use before. And now it would be the primary use of the property. Um, there was open space uh, shown on the comprehensive plan on the south and the west sides. Um, along with a park land, uh, the park was, is kind of was to be north of the northwestern cul-de-sac there in the area on the plan where they've got the, the pond shown. Um, so there was a park indicated in that location, and they, they are showing one in a, a similar similar location to that. Um, but they aren't showing any specific open space, um, that's, which is not to say they couldn't. Uh, deal with that at the time of development with a like a conservation buff or buffer easement. Uh, so that's something that could be addressed, but uh, I just kind of want to draw your attention to it. And then the original park land had shown access off of what would be the westernmost street rather than uh, what they're showing would have access off of east south side drop. So it's more just the access part of that. Um, and I had a number of 
comments specifically on the comprehensive plan. As Roger indicated, there's a lot of them that we can deal with. It's more just if you're feeling like the, the land use plan works, then we can work through some of the comments on the comprehend on the concept plan. Concept plan does not require formal council approval, unlike a PUD or that type of zoning. So uh, it's more shown, and I wanted to bring up issues that we would be looking at in terms of future platting should the comprehensive plan and rezoning be a Amended, be amended in the and the rezoning of work. I guess one of the main things to point out is that uh, with the comprehensive plan, uh, Northwest 44th Street was indicated as being a municipal arterial street, so it's a it's a primary street. Um, the importance of that uh, in one piece is that it pull is intended to pull some of the traffic off of third. Obviously, Third Street is a north a south uh, collective street through town. is limited in terms of how much improvement you can do to have this street carry more traffic. So the idea is that the as the city grows to the north, that we try to find ways to get traffic over to Forty Fourth Street and then south in that direction. When it's a through movement, I mean, if they're going to the square, they're going to be on traveling on Third. Um, so again, that looking at that as a primary corridor, and the commercial was located along there because it was a primary corridor, and it does extend all the way to eight. I guess one one question or comment I would have is the commercial obviously has shrunk quite a bit, mm -hmm. and by the time you put infrastructure and streets or whatever access in there, I'm, I'm not sure how much. We've got about 21 acres. How much that really leaves for development in there when you're talking retail? Um, I guess I'd be a little concerned about that as opposed to the original comprehensive plan. We did do a, uh, uh, a scenario to look at that specifically, and we did some comparisons with some out parcels in Anchorage and West Point. You know, uh, get a Menards or a Walmart plus again, we figured about 200,000 square foot in addition to the parking and tension and so forth, roughly, which was about what we were able to accomplish. So, we don't feel like it is a insignificant piece. We understand it's much smaller. You know, the, the half the project was commercial, the rest of it was kind of high and medium in the sense we want to go much lower density and still realize we can't. Take residential all the way to 44, although that's maybe what Andy would choose if he could. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, again, we were trying to, and we were trying to, again, still provide some sort of buffering a little bit between the uses, provide a little more variety and price of houses and so forth. So it's definitely a, a lot, much smaller commercial piece than what your comp plan calls mm -hmm. for, but we feel like the main focus of our effort is to try to get the larger single family homes on the west where the trees are and then buffer our way to the east and still leave a decent sized piece that <clears throat> would be across from the mid-american power station in, in more of the appropriate area for for, for the commercial but yes we did do at least a scenario we believe that there's at least uh, 200,000 square foot potential there okay. so it's, it's in the size of the area Uh, I guess I, I just have uh, several comments and concerns. Uh, I guess uh, initial comment is I'm glad to see some development occurring in this area. I think uh, we kind of know that Hope City is going to start moving in that direction, and I'm really happy to see that uh, we're going to uh, start seeing some movement there. We've seen some movement to the north outside of kind of our physical restricted area of lakes and reservoirs around us, and uh, I'm glad to see that opening up. Uh, we did a lot of uh, visioning on our comprehensive plan in trying to see and come up with ideas of the best way that we felt that uh, it would be good for the city to experience growth. Uh, one thing about this particular area was uh, the uh, corner of 44th and Southside Drive is the what we had consider to be one of the future main intersections of Polk City and Polk City and Ankeny actually combined. Uh, in that, uh, it has direct access to the interstate uh, I-35 if you go east. And so it would be a direct corridor that direction as well as the 
uh, uh, the north-south corridor that, that uh, Kathleen was contemplating. So that was why we chose that particular intersection as a commercial node area, is we do experience, uh, do anticipate that being a, a, a very uh, intense intersection, as well as the one two miles north on 44th, where it uh, also connects the uh, interstate to the. Uh, I'm just speaking from myself. Uh, we did show some uh, higher density housing to the west there. Uh, in hearing your thoughts uh, regarding the top uh, topography or uh, the, the lay of the land there and the trees and the woods, uh, I'm very open to considering taking uh, that down some steps and ha I think probably some uh, large estate or single family backing to the woods and the trees, at least from my perspective, makes more sense uh, than perhaps the, the, uh, the higher density. Uh, that does put the onus back on us as a commission and a city, however, in that we need to then take a look at how not only modifying the comprehensive plan for this area, should we agree to change that up against the, the wooded areas, but we also likely need to make a corresponding change someplace else because uh, we need to offer all kinds of housing to, to really everyone in our community. And if we aren't going to have that high density housing in these parcels, where in our community do we think that would be a good fit? And how can we do uh, not necessarily a, a, a comprehensive plan update of the city, but at least certain areas where we think uh, that might need to be updated elsewhere? Uh, do have uh, definite concerns with uh, the size of the commercial that you're uh, I, I think one of the uh, greatest sins that a city can have happen to it as it grows is to focus strictly on residential. And then as all of these rooftops appear, these res uh, the residents of our uh, community need uh, commercial property, dry cleaners, drug stores, and everything else to support it, but that land was not saved. And so now there's, you know, residential everywhere, and they have to go to some other community or drive long distances to get the services that they need. And that's part of our vision is trying to come up with a way that land can be preserved so that as the residential comes in, which tends to come first, that some land is preserved in the right areas from a transportation perspective and how we see the growth occurring. So that, uh, uh, so that those residents uh, can have the services that they need to, to make us a, uh, uh, you know, a meaningful community. And so with it only being half of, uh, you know, kind of the vision that we had proposed, I'm not saying that uh, what we had proposed was the exact amount or anything of that nature. But when you think of the parcel that you have here, you think of then the buffers that need to be installed after that, and then talk about retention for uh, stormwater and things of that, you're really not getting much usable space left over for any meaningful project uh, to enhance not only these residents, but the residents up and down the or, or probably on the other side of the street from Ankeny would also be using some of these facilities. And uh, I, I do have concern regarding that and, and uh, I guess would encourage you to expand that uh, further south and further west. Uh, also, when I think of commercial, I always think of people trying to get in and out of that facility as well from a transportation perspective. Uh, would really like to see access uh, from that commercial uh, up to, at least from my perspective, up to Southside Drive as well, whether it's through the medium density residential or the commercial, you know, a strip going up there, something that you know, people have options to move different directions and they don't feel stranded as they're, as they're using that commercial space. Uh, this certainly came in looking differently than I expected it to look. Uh, like I said, I, I think some things that you've come up with are, I think, are better than what our comp plan showed. 
And uh, some things, uh, however, disappoint me regarding with, uh, what the comp plan showed. And I guess those are my, uh, my, my feelings. Oh, oh, and also back to the parkland. Uh, you know, if, if we're going to be having uh, low density residential there, uh, to me, that park is there for their usage, and it would, they, there needs to be some corridor there for the residents to get to the park without having to go out and walk along Southside Drive to get to their community park. <clears throat> Any other comments? Uh, I think you kind of wrapped a lot of it up. I think, uh, was there one parcel out there that had access right on the East Southside Drive? Is that... Right or did I read yeah, if you look, it's a little triangular yeah. shape. One. That one right there by the. Yeah, what we were attempting to do with the original alignment is in the park. We were trying to get kind of collectively down towards mm -hmm. the wildlife refuge area in this area and keep the front part of it small and also orient the drive such that it wasn't directly across from the house. That did with the grouping of trees we were trying to save and so forth in these areas. It was created kind of an odd shape that either we extend these lines, which we can do to that parcel, it could take maybe move the road back over, which we may have to do to expand the park parcel. Whether this pond is improved and kept by the residents or filled and kept part of the park, one way or another, we've probably got some refigured. But yes, that was one we were proposing that I don't think we're afraid to lose. But we do have an existing driveway here. And obviously, there's homes and things that have driveways. And so this is one of it. If, if, if the idea is that you don't want any you know, new driveways, that's fine. But you don't want to do it, really, maybe get rid of this one, for instance, affecting the neighbors' current access. Yeah, I guess I would avoid any access is onto there from the new development. I know we're going to have it on some of the existing, but. And maybe just as a quick response to Ron's comments, you know, the comp plan does show commercial going all the way up to Southside Drive and across to the, so I guess we would have anticipated that when that occurred, there would obviously be opportunities for additional Southside access. But we could still look at if there's a possibility of doing yeah, I, uh, you know, there's certain, there's residential there currently. Uh, we have no idea how long that's going to remain residential. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if those uh, those residents are here, but if they want to continue living there for you know, you know, 50 years in those residential properties, they have every right to do so, and so uh, need to kind of work around uh, around that as well. I have a couple things. Yeah. Uh, I guess when I was looking at that, I kind of liked the overall idea, but uh, again, up with Ron, I think we need to somehow expand that commercial area. If I want to just let's say, let's say if from where those residences are in the corner, just to bring that all the way down, commercial, move that, bring that. And pull it into one community, one residential area behind that commercial instead of having a separate entrance into the, the housing there. But the other thing that bothers me too is that there's everything dumps onto Southside Drive and there's no access out of there on 44th. And it seemed like some way, as part of that, you could bring a road along the south side of the commercial into that area too, so there's more than one way in and out of that well, the residential area. Yeah. Because the the, the, the the townhomes are the, the they're locked in. I mean there's well that's two ways but it's really look it's confining. And uh, I think it's the same for the larger belt too. If everything goes on to the I think it would be good to have at least one of I think we've got some fairly easy alternatives to include. But that's kind of my overall idea, but generally I kind of like the concept of it. If we get a little more commercial area and massage the road entrances.
Any other comment? Uh, just one quick item, I guess. It's so much easier for us to have property owners combine with each other and kind of come up with a vision for a larger area. Uh, if you had to come in and just like with the western part said you wanted to go, you know, large lot residential there, I probably would be less apt to consider it than I am seeing the plan for a large area. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for that and for the owners or, or the landowners that are involved. Uh, thank you know, thank them for that also. It makes it a lot easier. I appreciate that and I know that that's certainly part to Kathleen and Chelsea have been helping us kind of understand as we've had meetings with them in the past. So thank you. So we've been trying to work with them. Any other comment, Commission? Your request then is to table this until January. Yeah. These comments back. Yeah, because that way we'll have time to take what we've heard tonight and what sure. the owners come in and to try to see what we can accomplish so we can minimize how much uh, discrepancy we got. I think the biggest piece that I'm hearing tonight commercial, which again is not something again is necessary for the trying to develop. We understand that's something that's important to the city, so that'll be the biggest key thing we've got to discuss is how if there's a way we can make an adjustment. But we would like, we, we do believe we can talk about that and be ready to come back to you with an updated plan and maybe some on the back for the January 20th meeting. Okay. Uh, do we have any audience comments regarding? No, I do. Okay. Sure, could you just give us your name and address? And yeah, I'm Dave Mulder. Sure. Um, I live on 1312 Northwest 44th Street. It's uh, one of the places right up there that's left up to the proposed commercial zoning. Um, would like to understand what the methods and what the process is to, um, I guess, petition against it uh, because of, of what was told me from purchasing that land in the first place from a long term vision was uh, intended for us to move into this community, um, support this community. And uh, in a longer term, open, I, I appreciate the country view and, and space, and I don't really necessarily want big commercial right next to me, um, as well as uh, for the future of my family and my kids, too, uh, I guess. So I want to understand what that opportunity is, petition against that, um, or how we can work together. Well, obviously, you're... Your ability to speak today. Do you live in that? I live in 1312 Northwest 44th Street, which would butt right up against this proposed C1 commercial. Corner. Oh, up in the right corner, in the corner there. Corner. I see. Built that new house in 2012. Bought the land from Jen. Well, obviously, there's going to be a series of discussions here. Tonight isn't going to be the deciding factor, so we appreciate your input and comments tonight. Take note into consideration. We've got valuable land that we need to feed people and clothe people to, you know, for a lot of generations to come. Right. So I don't like seeing prime, you know, ground come out of production either. Sure. Um, there's a lot of other countries that do high rises and things like that to put if you want more people in, in the community to support it. That's probably other right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Yes. Uh, my name is Jim Johnson. That's my wife, Connie. And uh, we're Exhibit A. That's our land. Uh, and uh, we go up uh, 44. To the south. This oh, is, okay. Yeah, that's our land. Oh, down, right here. down there. Right here. Exhibit gotcha. A. Okay. Is, gotcha. That's, that's our fence line connected. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, progress is inevitable. That we knew that there'd be development. I've got nothing against it. Uh, the only thing, naturally, I'm not going to like going up 44 when it gets all this built up because it's dangerous right now with my equipment and stuff going up there. My gator. And, you know, people don't care about those yellow lines and things. I think they need to definitely have things done there or make widening the road better. But, uh, when that gets built, uh, you know, speed limit. 
I've, I've called the police several times to try to get a 35 mile an hour speed limit there, but to no avail. And the other thing is, um, I run cattle. I'm doing what I wanted to do. I, I retired from John Deere after 48 years there. I'm building a herd of cattle that, uh, that I really love doing and uh, developing a kind of a breed too. So I run cattle on this. Cattle. Right next to him, where he's building and wanting to build. Yeah, which is fine, you know, but you know, and I just want some considerations for, fencing. I don't know what, some kind of a fencing to help <coughs> keep kids in and cows out. Because you and I both know that timber and kids, ponds, what have you, is a recipe for we're going to go over there whether dad and mom want us to or not, or our neighbors do. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I just, I just, you know, I'm nothing against it. I just want to make sure that we're given some consideration on that line uh, on the bottom there. And, and when you're looking at that, uh, what you don't see is at the end of that pond there, and, and that, that's a big, deep gully that's in between Andy and I. It's just kind of my property touches it, and then Andy's is mostly the depth of it, but mine's the hillside. So that's really never going to be anything but uh, very rough timber. But that's just a, I, I can speak for myself too when I was a kid. I love getting into those things <laughs> and exploring and what have you. But but uh, the, the fact is that's also, uh, that's cropland to the right of the, sort of, if you look at the pond, uh, kind of cuts off and goes down. To the right is farmland, to the left is pasture land. That we don't till. We run cattle in. We run cattle on. We do have bulls that, that we would do not, it, you know, I mean, bulls a bull. You know, so. And the tree it, is not going to stop them. No, no. So if, if they're on this, I would like some consideration for some sort of good fencing for us that, that would stop. You know, it's not going to completely stop. Mm -hmm. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, but just, just that kind of consideration. And that's going to up 44 traffic for us big time. You know, we moved out there. We turned over there by the cemetery and come down that gravel road. We were so nice and quiet there. Then they come through and divided the, the, the heritage farm right in half with 415 and right by us. And we got all that noise and all that traffic, and this is going to increase yeah, it for us. Yeah. So all I'm saying is just just think of us too, you know. For, and I understand that this, you know, I don't want to stop it for him. I hope, I hope he does good with it and everything, but just consider us. Let me ask a question. There's no fence there now. Yes, but it's it's a barbed wire and woven. I mean, okay. So, but you, there you know, I'm, I'm talking a so little more stable your, fence like wood okay. fence or but something. Your cattle aren't running off. Your cattle being, are you running cattle on this property? It's all staying south of that. Yeah, that's fair. It's all on Exhibit A is where you're running the cattle, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, during the, during the, sure. the uh, <laughs> after harvest, we, we graze it. Uh, so that during the during like the summer months and the spring months and everything, that, that you divide that almost in half. The right half would be farmland, which, no, we're not running cattle on those times. We're only running cattle on like from... Uh, uh, November, December to uh, early March. Okay. Right. So, you. I mean, we're not year-round. Right. But we do on the pasture land to the left. Okay. We run cattle year-round there. And like I say, you can't see it, but that's a great big gully that's, uh, that goes out of the end of that pond. That's a big ravine. Mm -hmm. So that's never going to be somebody's backyard, or it's always going to be a rough timber area. Unless, I don't know, Andy, you got anything else? I can know what you can do with it. Is it? <laughs> so, sorry. Uh, my, kind of my, some of my thoughts are kind of along the same line. It's, it's, it's what your name? I'm oh, sorry, Doug Layton. I live on East South Side Drive. You see the three lots in the row, I'm in the middle. Um, our front yard is a one acre pond. One of my worries is my liability of having a pond in the front yard when we're starting to put this many people out there. And, the, you know, it's the same thing. You know, what's a kitchen to be attracted to? And so now we're putting a park on the other side, and we're going to suck all the kids over as close to those three lots as we can. Um, I do have some worry about that and what that's going to be like. 
Um, we had also heard at one time that Southside was going to become a connector road and that they were actually going to try to pull traffic clear over to 14, which is on the other side um, of those three lots. Um, that that really doesn't go anywhere. I mean, I, you guys probably know on the other side is the backwaters for Sailorville, and it kind of ends and goes around. And, boy, if you start pulling a lot of traffic over there, where is it going to go, and what's that going to be like? Is that not true? I not heard of that. Uh, on our comprehensive plan, uh, which is on our website as well, it does show having some sort of a, a street. Uh, it's not, it's just showing a proposed street. It's not showing any, a connector status. Okay. It's just, it does show a north-south street from, uh, going just north from Southside uh, Drive uh, heading up through the community. But it's not does it. It's just designated as a proposed street, not as any connector status. Uh, certainly, going you know, on the Ankeny side, east, yeah. going east will be a major thoroughfare. Uh, that's going to be one of the. I mean, South Side Drive. So the concept is to take it to Forty Fourth and then go north and south from there. Uh, so the I, I'm just the way the comprehensive plan is looking. I'm not seeing that there's any significant traffic proposed west of 44th on east south uh, on the east south side but on the ankeny side of the road you know that's going to be the thoroughfare to the interstate and so that intersection and i guess my one last question is uh, the proposed park again you know I, I guess i'm trying to figure out what that's going to look like are, are is that a thought of a manicured park or is that the thought of leaving it i mean it's dense temper i don't think that's been proposed yet. okay hasn't got that far I think it's a requirement that we dedicate a certain amount of ground, and the comp plan also calls for that particular location to be the park. So we just attempt to figure out how that could be configured in the location to comply with the comp. Yeah, and from a concept planning standpoint, we want to make sure the park is large enough uh, that it provides for this full development. And so I'm not sure that the park that's shown is actually large enough um, because it's nearly uh, it's nine. 995.95 square feet per residential lot, so roughly a thousand feet per lot. And overall, I think that came up with about six acres. And so I think this is a little bit perhaps small to serve the whole development, plus the fact that detention ponds and then the embankments associated with it don't count toward that space too. It's so usable space, right? So, so there's some work to do on on that part too. I just have a question. Okay, now you're talking about posts and everything. What you have plans for our land because we go, uh, the rest of our land is on the, uh, well, it goes on down to 44 from there. And then it, we've got land on the south side of, of, uh, of uh, 415. Did you have anything in your proposals you're talking about long range planning that, that, that you've looked at our land? <laughs> The comprehensive plan would cover everything west of 44. The highway or northwest 44th is the dividing line, if you will, in terms of what would what would be considered part of Ankeny's planning area versus what's considered part of folks. Right. So anything that's on the west side of 44th, all the way down to I believe it's 94th Street, would be in Oak City's planning area. So it is covered on the comp. Uh, is there any time we can get a? Copy of this plan that you're Yeah, it's, on, it's available online. Oh. Online? Yeah. Online. Yeah. Okay. Computer or that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not far from what you read. They have a copy of the plan, both at City Hall and the library. Okay. Okay. I'd like to look at it. So I don't. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, my name is Steve Hackley. I live at 1138 North West Street. And my family owns a lot of the land on the north side of Southside Drive. And we're going to put in all these houses. We're going to have a lot of traffic. Are you going to pay Southside Drive? That. Yeah. Sure, I, I would assume so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's being discussed. Okay. That's being discussed, apparently. So you're not going to pay it or possibly not pay it? 
it's just that the timing and what what that looks like has not been determined yet. But it, the city's aware that's a consideration. Would you make it after the paper? Huh? Would, oh, okay. that it would have yes, it's a question of who, how it gets paid for, what it looks like. Yeah. So I mean, say we're going to pave the street. Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay for it? Well, that, again, that's what we're, it has not been determined. Other, yes. More of a lake, um, same thing, little block there on the three lots to the west. So if the street is paved, will our residents pay for drag pipe? I'm not sure if it's four footage paved street. Uh, again, that hasn't been discussed. Um, I would have thought that you would have had an agreement to pay your driveway when you got your building permit. Because that's been in Polk City Code for a number of years. Typically, the city requires uh, when the building permit, if the road's not paved, but there's an agreement that you have to pay when the road's paved. I, I'd have to follow up. I don't know. That's kind of, I don't do building permits, so I don't, I don't have that information, but. Other questions or comments? I guess I have, I have one question. Uh, my name's Eric Hill, and I live on the very, kind of right in the middle on the north side of South Side Drive. Um, looking at this plan, there's a lot of houses, potentially, a lot of traffic. My concern is mostly coming from 415, turning left onto South 14th Street, how we're going to accommodate that traffic. This is very busy already. Um, with no stop signs or lights or any turn lanes there, um, that is a concern for me and my family being able to access our property. Okay. Good question. All right, any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Scott Cherry. I live there on the corner next to Layton. Uh, just curious, uh, you know, the city hasn't really been. <clears throat> I actually oppose this because the city has actually put in a pump station. And halfway through the project, they decided to put another sewer main across the front of the yard. Uh, and wouldn't let me move in for the longest time. So now we're putting in this development. Now we're going to have all this increased traffic. I got children all under the age of 12 that live up there on the corner. Don't even know if you're going to you know, concrete the road. I, I, I just don't understand. Another thing, uh, the commercial. Why, why do we put this mini city in the middle of all this ag? What does that benefit? It doesn't benefit any of the residents around here. It only benefits the city, whoever else is selling the land. And as far as the commercial, what are they going to come out there for? Nobody's going to come out here for commercial. I just don't agree with it. It's been such a quiet place for a long time, and now you're just going to add 80 plus homes in here. You're going to have all this traffic going out on the south side road, not to mention I never even got notification that anything this was going on, and I'm pretty sure that the people north on south side haven't got any notification either. Yeah, the, the notification goes to properties to mention, within the city that are, you know, the home so. station next to me it smells every week. And, you know, I moved out there thinking that, you know, it's going to be a quiet area. I'm not going to have to deal with all the hectic uh, residential stuff that's going on in Ankeny and everywhere else. Now we're just putting it right out in the middle of everything. That we, I can't raise my kids out here worrying about all this traffic going back and forth. And right now, the way it is, it's like, you know, the fire department, what are they going to do about all these houses? Are they going to come across the bridge? It takes them 10 minutes to get there? What happens if somebody gets in a car wreck on the bridge and the fire department ambulance can't get to them? Okay. I just don't agree with it. <laughs> okay. Well, again, this is very preliminary. So I, I think.
think you've all raised some very good points you need to consider. Appreciate your comments. Are there any other comments, questions? Um, if not, um, I guess at this point, you're asking for this to be tabled so you can go back and consider what's been said here today. Yes. I just have a question. Since they've got the water main and everything running down 44, that could hardly ever be a full lane, can it? I'm assuming it could be whatever it needs to be in the future um, as the planning develops, but I guess that'd be an engineering question we'd have to run by in that plane. Because, yeah, that, that worries me about, I go up there every day to feed my cattle and, and drive in, well, during the summer, too, I used to haul hay there. What's and, the, boy, the, these people driving on that are... It's wicked. It's wicked, yeah, it's dangerous, to say the least. What, what's the jurisdiction? Street is it county, city, state, or Do you have a say on speed limit? I'll it would be city, yeah. it's, it's, it is the cities to the center line okay. where, where it abuts the city, okay. okay, and then the rest of it's the county town. Oh. until Ankeny annex is there, and then it'll be the city. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Iowa, Iowa law requires you to annex right. to the center line of the street. Are you ready on more and more school buses going up here? Oh, another question I had was how are we going to get sewer water out to these houses, these homes? Are they going to have to come across my yard again, basically? Are we going through the DNR or what are we doing here? Because I'm pretty sure you're going to disturb all the trees that DNR has there and all the wildlife that comes in and out there quite a bit. This doesn't seem right. Right now, there's a permit that's been applied for for the trunk main, as shown on the Polk County Comprehensive Plan, goes down the back side here. Bring it up to service. Yeah, is it going to go right through the DNR? DNR, I guess. Tear up all those trees. Well, if they don't, then we'll have to find an alternative. But that's been shown on the Polk County Comprehensive Plan, and so a permit has been at least applied for it. But okay, any other comments, questions? Do we need any motion or anything to the table and issue on the agenda? I, I think you should. Yeah, I think you should formally proceed that way. Okay, so uh, I make a motion to table uh, items 8 and 9 uh, on our agenda until some future date is scheduled. Second. Okay. Could you do a roll call on that? Sure. Vogel? Yes. Sayers? Yes. Lincoln's? Yes. Triplet? Yes. 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 Thank you all. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you for being here. Okay, um, we will move on to item seven then, I believe. Are you with McClure? Okay. All right. Okay, we'll move on to item seven. Consider a motion to approve the master plan for TCI parcel K. Uh, would you like to speak to that, sir? Sure. All right. TCI PUD inside of that pod is parcel three. That's the kind of the uh, garden home piece that was originally approved in 2012. 
for you tonight is an amendment to that to accommodate a footprint um, that Ewing Development has been working with us on to find a way to the city of Fort City. Um, the original PUD had 28 uh, detached villa units in that location. Um, the PUD before you tonight is proposing 25 units, so there is a slight reduction in residential units and parcels. Part of the reason the reduction is uh, the inclusion of the community clubhouse, the center, in the middle of that property. Um, also, the footprints that are being used in this proposed PUD are slightly larger than what was proposed back in 2012. And units 12 were about 35 feet in width. These are north of 40 to 42 feet in width, um, a little bit deeper as well, which is kind of creating the other request and the major change within this PUD. And that is a reduction of the setback along the north sides of parcel 3 from 30 feet to 15. Um, what this allows us to do is, is that, uh, accommodate four more units within the project. Um, to the north on the hotel parcel, you'll see there is a 30-foot buffer that was installed when the hotel site was built. And so our thought was is that if you have a 30-foot buffer that's already in place on the north side, um, a reduction to 15-foot rear just on the north side of this parcel kind of makes sense. It allows us to bring in a, a larger footprint, um, probably a more desirable for this market. Other than that, generally the layout is very similar to what was before. Um, we worked back and forth with staff on a couple of revisions and, and uh, have before you tonight, which I think is a, a very solid proposal. Um, with us tonight, we have representatives from Ewing Development as well. So we can answer any questions you have in regards to uh, their co-op system that they're proposing for the property, as well as in related to the architecture as they built this in several locations. Thank you. Kathleen, comments? Uh, yeah, their revised plan addressed all of our prior concerns, most of which were really just related to not showing the hotel and the existing single family no. because it changed to make it really clear that the only change that's being proposed is within this the balance, this particular bound. So. Uh, concern about the 15 foot rear yard. Um, again, so, given the, the, buff, the buffer that's yeah, there, right. um, less concerned, and since the hotel is already there, it's not like it's, I guess, I'd be more concerned if the hotel wasn't there and they were wanting to reduce it, and then, they, then the commercial comes in after the fact. Right. Or people buying there now, yeah. what you see is what you get in terms of that. So uh, there's more awareness, I guess. So stormwater for this will be incorporated with the hotel? Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember if it's 100% or not. We didn't look at the range calc at this point, but yeah, uh, probably remember more. Um, the basin was originally designed uh, to accommodate those that uh, original plan from 2012. I think as we go through the process with staff, we're going to have to review that and shore that up, make sure we still find the um, And then as far as utilities, if there's any questions, utilities are all there. Um, there's sewer that's on the north side of the of property, there's water connections along the public road. So it's pretty well serviced and ready to go for developers. Nice looking development. No, I, I was gonna say, I just appreciate your putting the renderings in there too. That helps a lot of envision what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this would be uh, like a, they're single family structures, but they're operated as a association where it's called the external. Uh, the and this is where it gets outside of my. <laughs> <room. Yeah. laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to pass it off to the yeah. viewing team here, and I think you better explain how they're all set up. Thank you. Um, I'm Bailey Van Ruppel, and I'm the marketing manager for Ewing Development and Vintage Cooperatives. So yes, they're standalone patio homes, but um, it operates as a cooperative. So everyone who purchases in is a share owner. So all the external and internal maintenance is taken care of. So you buy in pre-construction, and then there is a monthly fee that begins once everyone sees it. Like Wolf Creek. What was that? It'd be like Wolf Creek. It's a cooperative. It's, it's a cooperative, so it's different than a homeowners association. Okay or townhomes or condos because in the cooperative everyone's a share owner not in a condo or townhome everyone has their own mortgage whereas this team has one master mortgage okay. 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 and that includes the community or the yep community? that includes the clubhouse 
So everyone who purchases is purchasing a share. They're not technically purchasing. Share Basically, a corporation that owns the entire thing and you buy a share. Of the yep, you buy a share of their square footage, the road, the yeah. common areas. Right. Uh, do you then pay also a monthly fee too? Yep, once you then you pay a monthly fee which covers the remainder of the master mortgage because um, a first buy-in at about 60% covers internal and external maintenance, property taxes, use of the club room. Okay, um, so that includes sewer. the homes. Yes. All the, the um, care. Yep, and it's all independent more. living. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what do you mean by... Um, uh, what do you call them? Garden? Is there no basement or? Um, so the basement is an option, but the pricing that we have purchasing as a share is just one level. If you wanted a basement or an upper level bonus room, it would be considered an upgrade mm -hmm. and purchase set, paid for separately. So how big is the? Is this an indoor pool, outdoor pool? Tell me a little bit about you. Yes, yeah, so the clubhouse community room um, has a fitness center in it, um, a board room, a meeting space, and then just a large common area of tables, kitchen, fireplace, TV. We have a pool on there as a proposal. Um, the nice thing about the cooperative is we take feedback from people who are members who are purchasing in pre-construction. Um, some people don't want a pool. We actually haven't done a pool in any of our co-ops in the metro area. Just Iowa, as you all know, is not the best climate for it. would be an outdoor pool um, if they decide to. But it's not, you know, it's something that could easily be taken out. And it also depends on space available to land. Is there, um, with this then too, is, is there an age limit with this? Yep, or? it's 55 and older. So okay. um, it actually follows the age 20 rule. So 80% of everyone living there would be 55. Okay, any other questions? I guess I have a statement I'd like to make. Uh, the uh, uh, the co-op has been holding some meetings in town, uh, kind of advertising this development. I've attended one of those meetings. You could write a very small check to get on the list for lot selection. Uh, <laughs> I've written that. <laughs> Number one on yes. the list. And so uh, I will be abstaining. Subject to staff recommendations. Second. Can I ask a quick question of um, Kathleen for a second? So, Kathleen, if we approve this and they decide that for some whatever reason, when you're factoring in your lots or, or your houses, that you need to make a change, do they have to then come back in front of us for that change or? Oh, yeah, this is okay. not a site plan. Okay. Most of I just a site plan that there was. and potentially a plat as well. And this plat is an outlaw, so technically it's a plat and a site plan in front of you before they ever develop. Okay, I just wanted to mm -hmm. check. Okay. Further discussion? Last call. Paul? Paul? Yes. Sayer? Yes. Tim? Abstain. Triplet? Yes. Steve? Yes. Old Yes. 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 Okay. On to item 10. Firm a chairperson for 2020. Normally that would be. So, Tim, are you willing to do that? Um, yeah. I think that's the custom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, all right. <laughs> so, do we need a motion for that? Yes. Right, we do. Okay. So, would you like to make that motion? I make a motion that the uh, 
that Dennis Deeds, the current uh, commission pro tem, uh, be moved up to uh, be confirmed as chairperson for the 2020 season. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Ingest, right? Ingest. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Item 11, point of pro tem for 2020. Do we have any volunteers? We'd like to nominate somebody. New people. No. We Not for a while. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's been tradition. It's the one that has been longest, longest <laughs> since they have Served since they have served as a Cameron's chair. Okay. And I don't don't remember our pecking order. <laughs> <laughs> it's either Krista or myself. And I can't. Well, you don't need it. Mom played dumb too. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He so knows. it's me. So it must be. I, I don't know, I'm not sure. Oh. Look at it. Jenny? Do you know? I don't. Just say what. <laughs> Click on the computer. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. I'll be great. Okay. Yeah, that's my guess, anyway. That's your yeah. guess. Yeah, probably. That's right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can. Okay. So we have a motion. I so move. Second. <laughs> we have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Yeah. Item 12, for reports and particulars. Uh, so I don't have a ton other than to say that this year of all years we're working until the, until the bitter end. This is about as full of uh, December um, <laughs> yeah. and meeting as I can remember. But uh, maybe the thing that I had, so uh, we're going back to a rotation. So good news is that you'll be done with me as of <laughs> January and I think it's Ron Anderson is the lead on starting next month um, I will miss coming to these meetings and, and I want to say thank you to you guys it, it was kind of uh, coincidental timing I had a discussion with a, a neighbor council for actually a couple and they had been a bunch of issues with terms and seats and number of people and and I just got to sit and listen and, and uh, and that's reflective of uh, the seriousness you guys take, and, and really appreciate the approach that um, that's been. In my term as liaison, goes back a little ways, and and this isn't even what like 25 percent of the max attendance we've had, which is kind of emblematic of some of the issues that you've seen. So, uh, do really appreciate the work that you guys have done, and, and I'll be watching them. But uh, you'll have uh, you'll have Ron to kick around. <laughs> I appreciate your being yeah. with us all year, too. So. Okay. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to record that again. Kelsey, do you have anything? Um, I, I don't. I, okay. I appreciate everyone's professionalism with these tough issues. So thank you very much. Okay, anything from the commission? Uh, I wanted to give a quick update on our community visioning project. Uh, I think our, like two meetings ago, which is now like four months ago, I asked to be the PNC representative on that uh, committee. And uh, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, we did indeed put in our application uh, with the state uh, to be included in the visioning project. Uh, we were accepted. And so that was really great news. Uh, then on November 7th, we had a, a group from Polk City go up to Ames uh, and uh, kind of had Iowa State and the DOT put on a presentation for us as far as how the visioning uh, uh, committee would work, the support they'll be providing us in kind of train trainers kind of a situation. Uh, we've had one meeting of the visioning committee since then uh, to kind of provide those updates. Uh, also, we've set monthly meetings for next year. Uh, to kind of kick this off, I think we'll be on monthly meetings for, a, I guess, a good 18 months to two years while we kind of ramp up. Uh, also, we've set a meeting uh, in late uh, February, I believe it's February 29th, a Saturday, uh, where we have selected uh, representatives from the community or different groups uh, of the community 
to try to uh, get input into the visioning process. Uh, that will actually be uh, conducted jointly by the visioning committee and also some Iowa State representatives will come down and, and uh, help with that support as well. So as an example, uh, we'll have, we want a group of people that might be mobility impaired and want to be that are parents and then two uh, groups of children by age and trail users that are older, trail users that are younger, uh, those kinds of uh, just to kind of uh, kind of get input. We're uh, moving forward, and I think everybody that's on the uh, on which is excited, right? Great program. Thank you for doing any, that. Any additional input nope, on that? No, got it. It is the 29th, so uh, if you're available. Uh, that I think that there are the focus groups, but it is, there's also a wider net uh, to get input as well. So. January 29th? Yeah, it's a Saturday. Uh, February 29th. February 29th. Yeah, February 29th. February 29th. Every yeah. February 29th. It is. Sleep here. Is it already? Okay. Already. Already. Okay, thank you, Rob. Anything else? Commission? Okay, if not, we need a so motion to adjourn. Okay, second. Second. All right. All approved. Aye. 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 Yeah. 